What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the PlayStation 2 emulator on Mac. The machine I am using in this video is a Mac Mini with the M2 chip. Okay, let's head on over to PCSX2.net, the link to this page is in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click on Latest Nightly, and we're going to download the Mac OS version. Now here's that file in my downloads folder. I'm going to drag it onto my desktop. You guys can put it wherever you like. Now this PCSX2 file needs to be extracted. All you need to do is double click it. And the extracting will start. And there we are. We have our extracted file. Now we can drag the zip file into the trash. Now before we open this emulator, there are additional files you guys are going to need, with the first one being a BIOS file and the second one being your actual game ROMs. Now I am sorry, I cannot tell you where to get either, just do a Google search and I'm pretty sure you will find what you need, or you can check out my Patreon page, link in the description below, and I will have some videos over there that will help you. So I have both of those files in a folder I created on my desktop called PS2 Files. In here, I have my PS2 BIOS and three ROMs. Now, when you first download a PS2 ROM, it will be in a zip format that is not playable in PCSX2. So the same way we extracted the emulator, we have to extract our games. Just simply double click on the game. We can do Simpsons hit and run and the extraction will start. When it's complete, you will get a new folder that contains that ROM. If we open that folder, you will see the ISO file right here. This file format is playable in PCSX2. Then you can go ahead and trash the zip file. Now we can go ahead and open PCSX2. Now you will get this alert that PCSX2 cannot be opened because the developer cannot be verified. Now to fix this issue, we're gonna come up to the top left of our screen and click on the Apple logo. Go to system settings. Then go down to privacy and security. And we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And under security, you will see right here, PCSX2 was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer. Go ahead and click open anyway. Type in your Mac password and then hit modify settings. And then you're going to get another alert pop up. This time, go ahead and hit open. And now we are in PCSX2. Leave the language at default. This will automatically detect whatever language your Mac is using. For the theme, I like to leave it at native, but if you guys wanna change the theme, then you can select anything here and it will just change the color. And also leave enable automatic updates checked. Next. Now we have to load our BIOS file into the emulator. So let's go ahead and click right here where it says browse. In my case, I have mine here on my desktop in a folder called PS2 files. And then I'm gonna select PS2 BIOS and then open. My BIOS contained a Europe version, Japan version, and a USA version. I'm gonna use the USA version, just click on it and then hit next. Now we have to add our PS2 ROMs to the emulator. So let's click right here where it says add. My ROMs are also on my desktop. In that same folder, PS2 files. Open. Would you like to scan this directory? Yes. Next. And now we are gonna set up our controller and I am gonna be using an Xbox Series controller. Just make sure that you already have a connection with your Mac before opening this emulator. All we wanna do is go right here to automatic mapping and here's my Xbox series controller. And just like that, my controller is automatically mapped out. If you have a second controller connected to your Mac, you can go ahead and repeat the same thing for controller port two. Next, set up complete and finish. Now we are in the emulator and here are my three games. Okay, let's come up here to the top left and we're gonna go ahead and make this full screen. That way we can see our settings icon at the top. And let's come up here and click on settings and go down to graphics. 
Now for the aspect ratio, by default, it will be at four to three, which is the way PS2 games were intended to be played. But I myself do not like the black boxes on the side and prefer to play my games in widescreen. So I'm gonna change my aspect ratio to 16 to nine. And I'm also gonna change the FMV aspect ratio to 16 to nine. Now you do not have to do that, that's just the way I prefer to play my games. And in some cases, some games may look a little stretched. Then come down here to the bottom and we're gonna click on VSync to make sure we don't get any screen tear. And we're gonna leave everything else here on default settings. Now let's come up here and click on rendering. And for the internal resolution, you can go all the way up to eight times, which is 5K, which honestly, I don't think the M2 chip will be able to handle, but it will do 1080p, 1440p, and 4K just fine. My monitor's resolution is 1440p, so I'm gonna select four times at 1440p. For the anisotropic filtering, we're gonna go ahead and turn this up. I'm gonna do two times. I would say two to four is perfect. This will smooth out our textures in game and leave everything else here at default settings. Now, if you look up here where it says renderer, we're gonna leave this at automatic default and we're gonna let the emulator decide which one to use. But for the adapter, I'm gonna change this to my M2 chip. Now back over to the left and we're gonna go down to memory cards. And what we're gonna do here is create a place for our saves to go. So let's come down to the bottom right and click on create. Go ahead and select 32. And now we have to give this memory card a name. I'm just gonna call it saves, then hit okay. It's been created, okay. And now we need to right click on that folder we just created called saves. And you wanna click use for slot one. Now, if we look up here, slot one is now that saves memory card. If you wanna create a memory card for slot two, then repeat that same process, but select slot two. Now let's come down to close. Okay, I know I already have my controller set up, but I'm gonna show you how to get to your control settings in case you wanna change some buttons around. You wanna go back up to settings and go down to controllers. Select controller port one, and if I want to change a button around for my Xbox Series controller, you just click on the button you wanna change. So let's say we wanna change the triangle button. We would just click here and then hit whatever button you want to become the triangle button. And also just to let you know, a PS5 controller will work with this emulator as well. And back over here to the left, all the way at the bottom, you have your hotkeys. So you can scroll through here and check these out. Now, one last thing I wanna show you is how to get cover art for your games. So right now, our games are being displayed in a list view. If we wanna change that to a grid view, come up here to these four little squares in the top left, and it will change your games to a grid view. But notice we don't have any box art. So let's go up to the top and click on Tools and Cover Downloader. Then you want to jump back over to Safari and we're gonna go to this GitHub page here. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and scroll down until you get to these two links here. This top link here will be for default covers, which will be standard flat covers. But if you want some 3D box art, then you can use this link here. Let's go for 3D covers. All you wanna do is highlight this link, right click it, copy, then head back over to PCSX2 and we're gonna go ahead and drop that link right here and then hit start. And there we are, we now have covers for our three games. And if you want to increase the size of your box art, you have this little slider up here. You just slide it to the right and your box art will get bigger. You slide it to the left and it gets smaller. Now there's one more thing we wanna do before we load up a game. Let's go back up to the top select settings and interface. And right here under game display, go ahead and check this box, start full screen. That way the emulator will always switch to full screen when loading up a game. And now we can go ahead and load up a game and I'll do Tekken 4. Just click on the game and it will start up.
Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.